So the, let's move on to the second fight we have on the card. It's a welterweight matchup between Tim Means, who was supposed to fight last week, but then he, he had to pull out. So now he's fight, He's coming in 31-12-1 as the minus 130 favorite, and he's going up against Nicholas uh, Dolby, who is 19-3-1 and, and is the plus 110 underdog. What do you see with this matchup? Well, first, they're two veterans, uh, 37 and 36 in age for both of them. But this is your striker versus wrestling matchup. Uh, we get one on every card. Uh, Means has bounced back from a few bad outings um, and has went three and five, uh, three and two of his last five and is looking to ride that momentum. He's facing Dalby, who's a good wrestler who likes to grind it out on the ground and looks to score points by adding up ground to pound and submission attempts. Uh, Tim Means has the advantage in a lot of areas, most importantly, his ability to keep the fight standing. However, his weakness has been his takedown defense, and going up against a good wrestler like Dolby could be the difference. I expect Means to push the pace and work on uh, jab, work on his jab and his leg kicks to keep distance to negate these takedowns. Uh, one thing that kind of stood out to me about Dolby, you know, he's a great wrestler. You're going up against somebody with um, not great takedown defense, but I don't think I've seen this in a while. Two of Dolby's last five fights have ended in a draw in two different organizations. So he's not that guy who's going to come in here and just starch his opponent. Uh, he's the guy who's going to grind it out, take it into deep waters. Uh, and I think that this is what's going to happen with this one, but I'm going to go on the opposite side. I'm going to pick means uh, by decision. I think okay. the, the veteran knowledge, he's got, you know, he's got more wins than Dolby has fights. I think yeah, that's yeah. going to pay dividends. Yeah, and so we'll start with this. We got uh, Dolby. He he fights out of Copenhagen, Denmark. He's 36 years old, 170 pounds, 5'11", with a 74.5-inch reach, and he fights out of Rumble Sports Gym. Then you got Tim Means. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's 37 years old, 171 pounds, 6'2", with a 75-inch reach, and he fights out of Fit and a NHB Gym. First, he's got Darby. He has a karate background, and he likes to use a lot of high kicks and uh, calf kicks. Uh, that's his game. He, he uses uh, a lot of kicks. He punches off the clinch break very well and has decent hands. Not great, but just decent. He's kind of predictable with his takedowns, but is known for using his distance. He's pretty good uh, wrestling and does well on the mat. He likes to change between guard a lot. He likes to transfer to mount when he's on top of his opponent on the mat. Volume and cardio are great uh, for, uh, usages of his, and he is very durable. He needs to improve his takedown defense, but he's getting a little bit better with it. And then he got means. He is a southpaw striker who has fluent hands, nice boxing, good foot movement, and great striking defense. He likes to switch between stances depending on the fighter he's going up against. He's been mixing takedowns into his game playing lately and developing Sparner fight IQ. Mm -hmm. He's starting to show his wear and takes too much damage in fights now, but he's hoping that that doesn't affect him too much. In this fight, just like last one, these fights are hard to dictate. Yeah, every single one of them. But I'm going to lead uh, towards Nick Starby on this because I think that karate background with the wrestling is going to be uh, a good uh, usage for him. That he can use the distance with his karate to to kick him in the lead leg because uh, Tim means it's going to have that lead leg in, in front of him. And then he's going to then shoot and take for takedowns, which the percentage chance of, of him getting it is going to be pretty high because means uh, needs to improve on that. So I feel like to me, this is another uh, uh, decision victory uh, uh, on my hands and I'm going with Darby. Wow. This whole card could go completely different. One of us could go like five and zero, oh, and the other one can go oh and five. It's crazy. So far, so far. I, I agree with that. I just like, I wanted to go means, but I'm like, there's two things that uh, Dolby does that match up great with means. Yeah. Wrestling and, number one. Uh, wrestling is one. And I, that karate, those leg kicks, I feel like are going to be a good buffer to the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, because you're going to. Like you said, he switches stances, though, to means. So, like, he's going to he's gonna check those kicks and kind of keep Dolby guessing 
Am I trying to? I'm trying to convince you to go to Tim. Uh, Tim, <laughs> but, but, but my thought process with that is when he does that, he's going to leave himself open every time he switches yeah, for the true. takedown. You're right. So if Darby was smart, he was he would use that, use the kick in to get in the switch stances, then shoot him for the takedown as he's switching because he's not going to be able to go defend it right away uh, the the other way yeah. because that's because he's fighting Southpaw to begin with. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see though. Maybe it maybe he just says the hell with it. Let's stand up and bang. Uh, and that's how that's and that's how and that's how guys make mistakes, just doing the opposite of what they should do. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and that's what could if he does that, that's what would win uh, means the fight is, yep. is just that. Just in the Makano fight. It's all about sticking with the game plan. If you stick with it, you're good, but then you got fighters that don't want to stick with the game yeah. plan. So we'll the, see what happens. Yeah, the moment you deviate from the the course is there's a problem. You know, you're going to encounter so many different issues yeah. and, and hiccups. 